Thanks again for being here with us on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. The conversation now will be about the farmers' herders' clashes. It's been a big topic over the years, but in recent time, it's generated lots of hype because of what's happening in the southwestern states, particularly in Ogun and Oyo. And now it seems that a governor of Kano State uh, has a solution to this. Uh, that's the governor of Kano, Ganduje Abdullahi, saying that cattle movement from the north and southern part of the country should be banned. We've now brought in Wally Gomez, the MD of Quant Capital Limited, to help us discuss this. Good morning, and thanks for joining us. Good morning. It's a pleasure being here. Good morning, yes. sir. All right. I'm, I'm going to start by asking. Um, it, it, it's, it's been a conversation we've had for the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. Do you still agree that we should, you know, continue to describe this as a farmers versus herders clash? The okay. people who may not agree with that. Well, um, personally, I think um, it's not about the farmers and the herders clash. It's basically about um, a plan to do something by signing sect um, to, you know, infiltrate into the Nigerian um, landscape. So it's not about the farmers and the herders clash. Though they're trying to aggregate the territory of Nigeria into their hand, but personally, I feel that there's more to what we're saying. And I, I hope not. One day, uh, we'll all understand what's going on. But people would argue that this has been going on for years. Even before the current administration, there's been you know, the same um, fight between these two people, the farmers and the headers. And um, it maybe is just blown out of proportion now because um, the, the handling might be different now. Um, it's, um, I, I would say it's not as pronounced as we have it today. Uh, normally, like I've seen a lot of videos where uh, people are going on the expressway and the, the herders, you know, stop and maim and kill people. Those days there was nothing like that, you know, but it had become more pronounced uh, more recently. Within the last two, five years, it's been, it's been a, a constant heat on the, Niger on, on the travelers, on Nigerian citizens. And I think the government should do something immediately about this. I think it's about time that we, we get our country back and people can move around freely without being in a, a state of hysteria about traveling. I think that's the, that's the, that's the basic problem we have now, is that non-challenge of the, of the, of the um, national psyche, of the national um, 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 administrators of this country. All right, so these killings have been going on for a very long time now. <clears throat> but we will see, you know, representatives from the uh, Fulani herdsmen coming out to say that they're not responsible for this and that the miscreants in the forest, bandits in the forest, you know, using the excuse of herdsmen who are, you know, trying to provide pasture for their cattle as an excuse. Would you agree with that? Um. Basically, um, you can always say that, but we categorize these people as, I don't want to, I don't, I, I don't want to say Fulani, I just call them herdsmen, because when you now say Fulani, you're being stereotyped. Now, um, in this situation, the, uh, the, the herdsmen are just free to walk around, and they do anything that they want to do. Uh, in my office, in my office, in the morning, it's like they have a schedule, and their schedule is 10 o'clock in the morning, take the the cows for, 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 for eating or for, for grazing, five o'clock come back and it's like a clockwork. It goes like that every day. I, you see, the world has gone more modern than that. The world now has technologies where people can, you can put your herdsmen or your, your cows in a, an atmosphere and then, you know, feed them on it. You don't have to walk them around. And walk. If we have a very, very good government, we have a very good government, they should be able to provide um, space for these cows in, in the area of um, um, concentration. If the cows are southerners, they should make sure that the people managing these cows have, are mandated to create areas where they can concentrate and not disturbing people. Not, I don't have, you see, if they are still backward and they're still mo moving around and going, as long as they're in the forest, I don't have a problem with that. The problem is that when they try to come with guns and they try to kill people, for what? What are we going to, what are we, if they're Nigerians? And I'm, that's what I'm believing, that some of these herdsmen are non-Nigerians. Mm -hmm. So that shows the porosity 
of our borders. It means the immigration or whoever is in charge of that is not doing that. They just, they just, some, sometimes I receive, I have a full only friend. Um, anytime I receive those posts, I send to him. Just, are, these, are they talking? Is this the Fufu Day language you are hearing? And you say, no, these are not full this. But they come as full of inheritance. So it's, it's a, it's a two-way thing. But the government, have, the government has to nip it on the board. Well, I'm always scared. Right now, they're on the border of Baga. You know, the, the, the Baga going towards... Uh, they're there now. And my own scare is for them not to move into Lagos. And that is where the whole thing will really... Well, you know, there's obviously going to be, you know, numerous conversations on how we can um, prevent this from, you know, blowing out into, you know, a, a full war, a full crisis. Um, it, it, it might be a little, a little too late, though. But I want to speak now about Governor Abdullahi Ganduji, the, the governor of Kano State. Um, he, you know, has finally said that, you know, there should be a ban on moving cattle from, you know, the north to the south and different parts of the country. Would you say that this is coming a little too late? Um, two has things. the damage already been done? Two things. I think, number one, it's coming a bit too late. That's number one, because they're too deep inside the, the structure that we have in Nigeria. They're too deep. That's number one. Number two, if he's saying that genuinely, and he meant it, not a political statement, if he really meant it genuinely, that would be the solution to it. Because we sh we sh there should be a, be, a, be a demarcation between those that are in the south and those that are in the east. So that those in the south can, or the, the one in the north can take care of their cattle without... Where do, why do you have to move them to the south? Are you saying that the grass is greener in the south? The same grass that you have in the north is what we have in the... Why are they moving all the, all the cows down? south that's my only concern and if he by his statement really means it then that could be the solution so let's talk about the reaction of the government to this we see that so many analysts experts have you know said the government is complicit and there was even one of the stories one of the headlines we read in the today's papers uh, saying that uh, asking the president not to asking president muhammad Buhari not to be a president of the Fulanese. What are your thoughts on that? Um, we, we, nobody's a rocket scientist here about, about this. We all know that the government has been quiet about it. A, good, a, a government that really cares for its people will have said something. People are being killed and being murdered every day on the expressway. They're being captured on the expressway. And um, the government has kept quiet. I mean, the, 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 this is a war. That's why I'm concerned. If you're killing your people, and constantly they're killing your people. You need to come out and say something. And put in, you see, there's, a, there's, a, there's, there's some technologies you can even adopt to, to, to nip this thing in the board. If you have a system that can control the sphere of Nigeria, right, that can find out where these people are. True surveillance. Yeah, true surveillance. There, there, yeah, there's, I mean, give, give a contract to an American company. This hurts men will go back to where they came from. Because this is, it's, it's getting the country in a very jittery state. And we need to, we need to stop this. We, the government needs to come out forcefully. Thank God they've changed the security architecture. They've changed the security team. Service chiefs. Service chiefs. Thank God for that. Hopefully, the new injection of the new security chiefs will assist in bringing some normality into this. Because this is, this is like Nigerians are ready for... Not so, they're ready for, for, for an attack. And we're all agitated because what's going to happen next? But the government, the government should just say something so that we should, we, this is stop. Mm. There, there's um, been reactions from Southwest governors. Um, I'm sure that you've been following you know, how they've been reacting, the um, traditional rulers also. And earlier we spoke about Tony Boho and his uh, uh, comments towards the, own, uh, the Oni of Ife. Um, but you know, how would you rate the reaction first of all of the southwest leadership uh towards the um, issues that have been occurring i'll give i'll give um Akiridolu thumbs up i'll give um, um Makinde, he needs to do better than this I, i'll give dakwa he needs to be more polit not, not he need not to be political and i'll tell you lagos state governor is zoch because we have they haven't come out to express their anger in this, that people are being murdered and the governors are keeping quiet about this. It's, it's not a joke. They are coming and they're coming in, in, in groves. 
and this is this, there's no plan. We, they need to all sit down and tell us what they're going to do about this. Even if the federal is not saying anything, the states, like Akira Dulu and uh, 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 Fire Me, I think Fire Me said something too. They have spoken, and Sunday Boho came out like a man and said, "You cannot kill, kill." That's what I expect from the governors. You cannot keep killing, killing, killing our people. Well, they need to. They need to take action so that citizens will feel comfortable being in their homes. I'm scared, especially Lagos. We need to do something. Get ready because these guys are coming, and they're telling us every minute that they're coming. So what are what are they planning for them? What are we? What are we? Should put some security architecture in this. It's it's it's. I, can never, I was supposed to go to Undo last week. I just I just couldn't go because. People are saying, don't go, because they, they, they're everywhere. They're picking up people everywhere. Why in my country? Why must we go through this? Why must we be scared of foolishness? The, the, the Lagos State government, um, you know, maybe we can describe, you know, as, has been silent um, in the wake of all of this. Um, do you think maybe it's because Lagos hasn't, you know, had um, any really serious attacks from these persons? Um, do, you the need to, do you need to open your, uh, you, in your home, you need to open the doors? So that thieves can come in. You know, that's why we're putting, we put security in our doors. Because we anticipate them coming. In the same thing as Lagos State. Lagos State needs to be prepared and warn people and start talking about this. Because huh, there's some saying that if, you, if I slap your enemy, the enemy will slap you back. Now we are, we are, gonna, we are going to have to be proactive in this state to make sure that we're prepared for this state. Unless the government takes charge. Unless the government takes action. Right now, everybody is scared of. That's the most scary thing on the face of the earth now. The herd is uh, full of the clutches. And they are moving down south. That's integration into the, into the southern territory. And that's dangerous. So there's been talks about this. I mean, Southwest leaders met with, you know, representatives of these herds. Many met in Matban. You know, they had talks, and it seemed like they had agreed they were going to ban open grazing. They were going to ban night grazing. And even Femi Falano, SEN, came out in defense of Governor Kiridoli's statement, saying, actually, the Constitution uh, specifies that if anyone needs to cultivate the soil or to graze in the forest, they need to do so with the permission of the uh, governor of the state. But this is very controversial, really. How would you now just oppose this with our constitutional rights for freedom of movement if there's now ban on some certain people from some certain tribes moving into the country just so that they can you know, continue their business? Like I said, the freedom of movement is in the Constitution. But the freedom of movement is not saying the freedom of cows. It's two different things. Mm -hmm. Now, yes, the human being can take the cows, can take their property, in quotes. That's their property. Mm -hmm. But when the, where I'm having a problem is how they kill people, how they maim people, how they murder people. If, you're tech, if that's what you want to do for your business, to be moving up and down and, you know, that's your business. Is you are working harder to get little, whereas you can create something in the north and feed these cows, right? Why must they come to the south and kill? That is that. Why are they not killing up north? Well, they shouldn't be killing anywhere. They shouldn't. Why? Mm -mm, what, you're not understanding me. Why are they targeting the southerners? It's not that they should kill. Why are they coming and killing us around here? Why? They no. should, this is our country. We have the same rights you have to move your cows from north. Put, put it in the forest. Go and eat. Let them, the cows, eat in the forest. Don't come into the... Let me tell you the story now. Let me tell you something that is very disheartening for a, motor, for a country like Nigeria. Do you know that I was going to... I was going from the airport to Abuja. I mean, when I was going... I got to the airport. I was going inside Abuja. Do you know that on the expressway, on the expressway, we had to wait for all the cows to, leave, to pass? That is ridiculous. On a modern, in a modern city like Abuja. That is a disgrace. Even in front of my office, we have to wait for cows. We respect cows more than human beings. Why must it be? Now, this reminds me of a headline. I mean, this was just yesterday. This is Governor Okezi Pazu of Abia State. He says, we pay 100,000 Naira compensation to Fulani herdsmen whose cows are killed during misunderstandings. During what standing? Misunderstandings. Okay, you, they pay money. They for pay the a hundred million naira for any cow that is 
a hundred thousand naira, beg your pardon, for any cow that is killed during misunderstandings. And they say they pay the same, and herders pay the same, pay the same amount for farms, farmlands destroyed by stray cattle. So are we now going to settle this through cash? You pay money for herds for, for, for cows killed. Headsmen pay money for fa for farmlands that are invaded. I think that we need to. If, if, if we're continuing to joke as a country, I think we need to now sit down together and do a constitutional write up on how we're going to live with the cows. This is this is ridiculous. This is insulting to the brain of now, cows are meant to be grazed and you know slaughtered and used as um, suya. We shouldn't be. We shouldn't be the ones bowing down for them. I mean. The, the, the system, because you should have created a system where the, gray, the, 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 uh, the herdsmen can take their cows, put them in an area where they can, can let them know that they can use modern methods of feeding the cows. Yesterday I saw in a video of a guy that just created like a small little uh, box where the grasses are and the cows just stayed and they were eating their, their why can't we just... Think outside the box. Why, why take cows from uh, Maiduguri or Sokoto and bring them all the way to, uh, to, to Lagos? Why all that? Why can't they just you know, a, a stay little, in the a, area? A little bit more on Southwest leadership. Um, the traditional leadership in the Southwest. The what? Um, traditional um, leadership in the Southwest. There's also been criticism for Sunday Boho's um, approach and the, the manner at which he has decided to defend the people of the Southwest. He's not a you know, politically elected leader in any way. Um, but I, w I want your quick reactions to what he is doing and um, those who criticize his methods. Okay. A man that sees his family being killed has a right to say you cannot keep killing my family. If you look down history, there have been war even people like Alexander the Great, there have been warriors that are trying to defend the citizen. He's just trying to say, if he, do, if, he, if he had not come out and started saying you cannot kill my people, you cannot kill my people, I'm telling you this thing will have gone bigger than what we're going through. Now people are all over the world, it's been shown, all over the world that there's, some, there's a warrior in the Lego, in Nigerian system called Sunday Boho. He's now a matter. He's now, he's, the guy has come out to defend. I'm saying that, yes, they should have a meeting with him. They should find a way. I'm telling you, if they had given Sunday Boho a contract to get rid of all this uh, Boko Haram, just give him a contract. One week, they'll stop all this rubbish. Because, number one, he's a fearless guy. And to be a man, you have to be fearless. Nothing, you, you, to be a man, you have to be fearless. And number two, you have to have strategy. To, to nip all these things in the bud, and which he's doing. He's telling, don't kill my people. Stop killing my people. He has the right to say that. He's a, he's a Nigerian citizen, and he's telling all leaders should, he's seen farther than most of the governors are seeing. Because if you continue this rubbish, people will be, even they'll come to Lagos and go into your bedroom, or they'll come into your house and put cows there and you can't say anything. Mr. Wale Gomez, yes. uh, quickly before we leave, because we have very limited time right now. Mm -hmm. The United States is the largest, right? It's world's largest producer of beef, mm -hmm. right? They're also the second largest beef exporter in the world. Mm -hmm. But you don't hear instances of headers. You don't hear instances of, you know, cattle rarers, you know, attacking other people. You don't hear things like this, but they're the world's largest in basically in the world, right? So these departments in the US, they are, they are basically regulated by like departments of agriculture. Why don't we have the Ministry of Agriculture looking into this? Why don't we have the government establish a ministry for oh, cattle rent? No, 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 they have this, this is, these are well instituted, you know, institutions basically, these are well established institutions in other parts of the world. There's a US Department of Agriculture, like I mentioned, that, you know, basically focuses on livestock production. I mean, it's a very big business. Cows, smallest goes for about 60K, biggest giant size cows go for about 450,000 naira. This is a very lucrative business. So since this has gone beyond business to threaten the security of people, why don't we have the Nigerian government partner with the Ministry of Agriculture to create something that would institutionalize cattle rearing and livestock so that we don't just protect people, but we also have our livestock also to be, you know, great quality and maybe even exports like the U.S. is doing. Okay, um, 
you, you, you hit the nail on the I, head. I say this because when, when we look at this, it seems like it's now depoliticize the whole issue. Mm -hmm. Don't you think so? I th like like I was, when I was saying that you are now talking like a like a person that has that has the interest of Nigeria heart. The government of the day technically should have a, I'm sure in the Department of Culture there will be somebody, something, a desk that will control something like that. They should upgrade it into a full fledged uh, um, uh, department that will monitor the activities of these herdsmen, the cows, and all these things, like they do in America, like they do in England. That you can't just see cows roaming about and free. You can't see all that because it's a structured society. In this country, we still have, we still, well, we're still growing and we're still putting things in place. But I think the first thing we need to do is to set up a commission that will tackle this problem. It's a menace, and I'm scared for Nigeria. Do you, la lastly, do you agree with the idea of negotiating and having peace talks with bandits and um, headers? It depends on what the motive of their, of their actions are. If the motive, the underlying factor is different <laughs> from what me, you and I are talking about, then how could you negotiate with that sort of person? But now it's it. I think it's it's deeper than the the herd. They just I think they're just using that as a as a cover up. There's an underlying strategy and program that they are. Uh, this is my own because it's getting five years ago. Herd men, they just go around and we go away. They don't disturb. They don't go on the street, on the freeway. I think there's there's underlying thing. I'm, I'm hopefully it will first start in our lifetime. All right, Mr. Wally Gomez. Uh, strong words uh, from you to the Lagos State Government. And, um, yeah, Governor they should start planning. They should start planning for them. They're coming. But, uh, Governor Zongwolu, um, I believe, um, is on his feet and is, is, is aware of the security situation. Well, do you, don't you agree? Well, I plead the Fifth Amendment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll take a short break. Thank you very much, Wally Thank Gomez, you. for stepping You know, another thing about our company is that he sees ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you very, very much, Wally Gomez, Thank you very much. for it's stopping by. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we're going to Kogi State. The uh, government over there doesn't believe in the figures of COVID-19. They have claimed in the past that those figures are uh, false, uh, um, over-hyped, um, and uh, maybe also Abakiari, the former chief of staff to the president, didn't die of COVID-19. But, of course, there's been a battle lately between the PTF and the Kogi State government. We'll talk about that after the short break.